So I'm Brad with High Five Side, um, and this is uh, part three of our video series on our painted cabinets. Uh, today we're going to show you how to cut and buff them, which is wet sanding and buffing. Uh, we're going to go over some of the products that we're going to use, some of the things that are cheap to buy that you're going to need if you're going to wet sand and buff anything. We'll get started on some products. We'll start with some sandpaper, 800 grit, I use a lot of 3M products here, especially when it comes to sandpaper, but any good name brand sandpaper will work, especially when it comes to the higher grit sandpapers, you want to use a name brand, because the, the sand will be more uniform on them than the cheap stuff. So we have an 800, this is a 1500, this is a new type of paper, which is pretty neat, it's got a little almost a little uh, cushion back to it. This is a piece of DA paper, which is 1500. And then uh, this is the plain sheet paper, which is pretty readily available to everybody. And we have a uh, 2000 grit, which will be readily available. And then we have a uh, 3000 grit foam pad. And it's really thin foam. We'll use it by hand. We won't use it on a machine. I don't recommend using a machine if you've never used a machine before. We'll move on to foam pads. There's a lot of company that makes a lot of different foam pads. This is a compound pad. This is a finishing glaze pad. So, or polishing pad, sorry. Those are the two kinds we use, or 3M. I will put the model numbers and stuff down in the descriptions of what we use. These are the three inch ones. This is the purple pad. I've had great luck with the purple one instead of the white. This one cuts, it's a little more aggressive, and when you use a smaller machine, it doesn't quite have the, the aggressiveness that a big machine does. That's a three inch pad, and then you have your foam polishing pad. Compounds, there's a lot of them. I use Presta, it's what I've used for many, many years. That's our pot, that's our compound. And then this is our foam polishing. And that's a 3M product. Like I said, I'll put it all down in the description of what I use. And as long as you find a system that works, there's McGuire's, Mother's, 3M, Presta, there's all kinds of them. Gonna need some Dawn soap. Just the regular Dawn soap, bucket of water. We put about a pea size, couple drops of Dawn soap in there just to loosen up our paper. And you're gonna to wanna to put your paper in there about 10 minutes prior to what you're doing. Get it softer, otherwise it's hard. And those are the three grits we're going to use. We're going to use 1,500, 2,000, and 3,000. That's it. Got a couple microfiber cloths. I have a piece of foam. This is pretty important if you use a, a towel. Your work will slide around on it easy. This is pretty, I mean, it's pretty sticky. So we use a lot of foam here when we do little parts. That way it doesn't slide around on you. Um, if you got access to get Dura blocks, they make a great little block. This comes in about a 12 inch piece. We just cut them for whatever size we want. Otherwise, today we're going to use just a paint stick. This is an old school thing. A lot of older body men use paint sticks for everything. We're going to move on to some buffers. This is a Harbor Freight buffer, which is a pretty good little buffer. It's lightweight, works good. It's about $40. Uh, I have a few of them in my shop here just for backups when switches go bad and the good ones. The only thing I don't recommend that they have in here is this pad. It's way too hard. There's no, there's no give to it at all. And you, you want something that has a little give to it. And this is a Presta product, and 3M makes a bunch of backing pads, 
I'll put a few numbers down in the description of different pads to use. So we have, I'll have a buffer one that I don't change pads out on, or, and then we have, you know, this is the Makita one. And we put tape over the, the variable switch so we don't hit it with our hands as we're trying to buff. Then we come to the three inch one. There's a bunch of people that make three inch little buffers like this. Um, this one's probably about five years old. Batteries are getting pretty wore out, so there's uh, quite a few buffer, small buffers like this that I'll put in the description down there that I think are great products that I've had before. And we have a few other ones here. Otherwise, uh, we'll get started. I'm gonna change the camera angle so it's right here on our workpiece. And then I'll show you how to basically wet sand. All right, let's get the wet sand in. Got our 1500. We're gonna wrap it around this paint stick. That'll give us a little cushion. It's all them wrapped. And we're not pressing. If you're gonna press, you might as well just use a lower grit. Just sliding it across. Being careful of the edges, you don't wanna flop over those. Hopefully I'm in the right light here so you can kind of see some shine going across here. That way you, you've seen the orange peel when we started. And we're just gonna sand and we'll sand the whole thing with 1500. And we'll come back with 2000. to the buffing or 3000 and then buffing I'm just going to show you one side at a time here and as you're sanding you can kind of see the orange peel going away just got to pay attention and this clears pretty good build for a rattle can so I'm not too scared of it I'll wipe it down and hopefully you should be able to see in the camera the dullness it gives and then we have a few little where the orange peel still there so we're gonna wet sand it just a little bit more with our 1500 careful of the edges The only reason I use two towels is because one will get really soaked and it'll just smear everything around. This one will dry it off good. I see a couple spots I'm going to get right in here, and a couple right up in there. You 
can see that there's a doll and then there's shiny little low spots. And you want to get those shiny little low spots out of there. That way it's, it's as flat as you can get it with what you got you're working with here. Okay, looks pretty good. It's hard to see, I'm sure, in the camera. It's nice and dull. I only see a couple minute little dots, but we're still got a 2,000 grid it, so I'm not worried about them. Um, now I'll just, I'm gonna wet sand the whole thing and then we'll come back and we'll 2,000 grit this panel. We'll 2,000 grit the whole thing. And we'll go from there, so. Okay, now I'm gonna show you the roundovers. We're gonna be really lightly on them. We're not gonna be overly aggressive. So we're just gonna let it flop over the edge, kinda of like we did when we, when we sanded the cabinets. Because those will sand really easy because you're really biting into the corners. And I always make sure that I'm seeing the front of it here. I don't want to try sand them back here. And I usually try to keep my speaker box here if you're doing something like this so that water doesn't sit in those edges and next thing you know it swell it up or finds a pinhole that maybe it wasn't primered right in that spot. Just doing everything lightly don't be crazy with it don't want to ruin what you just did so. Okay, we'll move on to 2000 grit. And unwrap our 1500. 2000. And you're always going to want to use some type of a block under there. You don't want to use your fingers because you'll leave finger marks everywhere that you've sanded. That's right. Just being light, letting the sandpaper do its jobs. And as you sand, you can 
you can smell the solvents in the clear. So it means there's a, still a few trap solvents in there that still come out. Oh, 2,000 you ain't got to go crazy with. You're just getting out the 1,500. You're done blocking, so. That'll be 2,000. Let's see, I'm not in the camera angle here. Making sure I'm not blocking the camera. See that? Okay. I'm just gonna keep moving on. I'm gonna 2,000 all of it. So. Okay. Now we're gonna do some 3,000. And I usually fold it so I can see that I'm getting up to my edge. I don't want this, and then it flops over and sands the edge off. this is pretty fine stuff so you're just basically kind of like you're just scrubbing a dirty dish We'll make sure we get good sanding with 3000 so we get all the 2000 grit scratches out. You could go to 2500 before 3000, but I don't see the point. Okay, we'll move on to our other sides and all right we're all 3,000 we're going to start to buff put the towel over that so we don't get a buff bunch of buffing compound in it um, I'd suggest doing one cabinet at a time or if you're doing big project do surfaces at a time don't wet sand the whole thing and then start buffing because your clear could get hard by the time you get there especially if you're not an experienced buffer and it's gonna take you a while to get there um, this is a I don't know what they call that but it cleans uh it cleans this all this gunk off of there it's a bunch of dried up compound in there a lot of people won't have that, so I always used a screwdriver back in the day. And that cleans compound off. So we're going to draw an arrow on here so everyone can see which way the pad goes. Because it's important. We're always going to buff. On this this edge and then we're gonna turn our box and we're gonna buff this edge we're gonna turn our box we're gonna buff this edge we always want the pad to fall off this way 
We don't want it to catch here because it will just flip and throw our box on the floor. Ken, if you want, lightly clamp it so you ain't got to pick it up off the floor later. Get her pressed to compound out. And then we're gonna, we're not running the buffer flat. This, this uh, cabinet's way too small to do that. It'll catch too much and start vibrating around. So we're gonna run our buffer just a little bit on the edge. That way when we come around like this, it flips off this edge. We don't want to fall over the edge. We want to stay up on the surface, but tip our buffer so it always falls that edge. Just concentrating on the edges for now. Now here we don't have anywhere to clamp, that's why we're at the edge of the table. So we can clamp it over here. Just getting my pad. So it's got some compound on it, if you can see that. So I ain't just throwing it all off the table or off the project here and then we ain't got nothing to buff with. And I'm feathering the trigger of this and we are on about three and three quarters. It goes up to six, I think. That's way too fast for this little project. But I'm, I'm feathering the trigger as we go so we don't have so fast a rotation. Buffing usually scares everybody. You just gotta take your time and make sure you always remember which way that it's rotating so you don't burn that edge. Keep your buffer moving. Keep compound on it. Make sure you clean it when it gets dirty. Otherwise all the pores in the, the foam get clogged and you're not doing anything. You want some foam or some compound in that foam but not clogged. I was just getting some of the compound off the edges so I could get that good. Then we'll do the middle and we'll kind of do a brushing along the edges again. And we should be done with compounding. Now as I go, I'm pretty used to moving the buffer the way I need to. So you always want to make sure that edge and I got it tilted a little bit as we go around because if you catch it like this it's going to flip that up.
Okay, we'll move on to the three inch one. And you can see that's pretty clogged, so. I wanna get them on nice and straight so they ain't vibrating like crazy. edges here. And that rotates exactly the same way, which this has dual, it rotates both ways, but I would keep it just on the way that rotates, that way you get used to it. And I'm not pressing down, I am just letting the buffer do its job. This is a little more forgiving. I mean, it ain't like that machine. Once that catches, it tears everything apart. Since I'm doing them lightly, I'm going to go over them a few times just so I know they're buff. Okay. Call it buffed. We'll come back and we'll start to pol or, uh, put a polish on it. So. And that will just basically take our buffing compound off and really puts a high shine to it. Now that we have this all buffed, we're gonna to wanna to buff the whole thing before we pop, go into polishing. Don't wanna do each side at a time. Buff the whole thing in case you have accidents. You'd hate to get all the way done with your project and in the last panel you catch the edge and tear it off. <laughs> Which if you follow simple instructions, that should never happen. Okay, so the polishing part is a little different because this really wants to grab because it really wants to shine that, that paint on. So you gotta be even more careful with the polishing part. Everyone thinks the buffing part is the hard part. The polishing part is what grabs and has to dry and that's when you're, you're looking at what you're polishing and it's getting a great shine to it. So you gotta be careful the heat is very temperamental. Let me move this. I think you can see it better. Like right in there, I think you can get a shine to it. So we'll move that there. See that shine across there? 
from where we started. Put on this. We'll clean it. Make sure you hold on to your screwdriver. Otherwise, it'll be sticking in the wall over there. Kind of holding up on them, not letting too much weight go in because I'm I'm trying to make it as fast as possible and get it shiny. I'm not trying to get any scratches out. So. Making sure my edges are polished out. Well, I think we're done. Um, you'd want to get a, a new towel. And some people don't believe in microfibers. They believe in something else. And I don't know what it is. But I've been using microfibers for quite a while. They seem to work good for me. So oh, that's it. Um, then you'd move on to all the rest of the panels with the polish, and then you come back with a type of detail spray. Don't use a paste wax. Paste wax will seal the clear coat, and it'll probably end up chalking it. Which chalking will it'll turn it white. It traps all them solvents in because it's still going to be breathing some solvents for a little while. All paint does. But I'm pretty sure you can see that shine in the camera there. It's pretty good for rattle cam. So. Well, that includes what we did. I think this finish is great for where I'm putting it. Um, that's a Krylon enamel with 2K clear over the top. So in the next video, I'm going to work with some Duratex. I'm going to work with some Kills as a filler primer um, and Duratex as a filler primer. We're going to do some textured work with Duratex and we're going to paint over the top of it. We're going to do kind of a budget build. I got a bunch of scrap wood laying around that either it's going to get thrown away or I need to cut it up for something. So the the uh, speakers and stuff that are going in it will be a little around, right around a hundred dollars for everything. Um, and then we're going to do some clear coating over wood grain. We're going to show you some different types of dyes that I use. I don't use um, stains. I use paint dyes. Um, so there'll be some cool stuff in that video. Uh, if you like video, cool. But I'm going to move on and keep buffing this, and then I will post some pictures of the finished product once we put speakers in it and put the inlay in it, put the feet on it. Thanks for watching.